Welcome back to Geffen's channel, everybody. I uh, hope you're all doing well, having a lovely day. I thought I'd do uh, a three Doxa comparison video today because I finally got my Doxa collection complete, other than the 200, which I'm not particularly interested in. This will be quite a sober review, so it might be a bit boring because I'm not pissed yet. But I wanted to use the daylight. We've got light until about half past four, so you can see these as they really are in natural light so we've got the sub 300t the sub 600t and the sub 1500t i'm going to put them on weigh them measure them and tell you about what i like and don't like about each of these and perhaps it might help somebody decide which one to go for if they're considering purchasing one of these um you might ask why have i got three doxers i don't know really i probably i got a bit fed up with seiko and um, Docs is sort of semi-attainable. You know, I'd really like Tudor and Planet Oceans and all these kind of watches, ZRC. But these I can sort of afford, and they are sort of very well-built Swiss watches. Yes, you all say they're made in China. I don't really care where they're made or where parts are made. They're great watches, and I really like them. So that's why I've fallen in love with the brand. So the 300T... Is the quintessential Doxa, the Jacques Cousteau watch from the 1960s, I think. Um, and this is the updated version. There is also the Sub 300, which comes with a bubble crystal and uh, it's slightly thinner and has 300 meters of water resistance and it has a, 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 a worse clasp than this. This, this clasp is better uh, so, and it's also more expensive, but it does come with a cost chronometer grade movement although all three of these run within COSC even though they're not actually COSC certified so bear that in mind uh, this watch costs I think £1,890 new uh, and there it is on my 19 centimeter wrist and it wears very comfortably it wears quite flat on the wrist beautiful beads of rice bracelet which is Unmistakably Doxa, it's a lovely bracelet, great clasp with this ratcheting diver's extension, which is all milled and performs great. Lovely bezel action here. You have the typical no decompression outer bezel uh, polished, which will scratch easily, so that's something to, it's just part of the fun. It does scratch as soon as a jumper rubs over it or you wear it with a coat on, so that's something to think about. Great sawtooth indices, uh, really easy to grip, turns lovely, very nice, all lines up perfectly. And you have the lovely orange dial, this is the professional, classic colour for Doxa. Quadrant dial with these uh, loom markers, the loom is very poor on these, all of them really, everyone knows that. Uh, and I'll probably film a time lapse video of Doxa loom compared to my Marine Master tonight and post that just so you can see how bad it is, but you know. Whatever. Great knurling on the crown here. You have a ETA 2824 inside this one. Uh, there's the traditional Doxa logo, which is the sailboat. Sub 300T. This is 1200 meters water resistant, 120 atmospheres. Lovely, lovely watch. All screwed links. Bracelet is just excellent. Uh, and it's really nice. And the size of this one is. Let's measure it. We've got a 14, 14 millimeters uh, by, let me see here. Where is it? It's 43 there. And the lug to lug, a bit tricky to measure, but it's very short and that's why it wears so well on any wrist. Oh, you know, you don't have to have a big wrist for this. It's, it's nice and short, like a turtle. Uh, it's quite wide, but short. And what a great piece. Uh, so that's that. The only one about this thing about this one I don't like is the loom, of course, which is terrible. Absolutely shocking. But uh, other than that, great watch. So that is the 300T. Next up is, I've just reviewed this watch yesterday, and some of you have probably seen it, but if you're new to the channel, this is my latest watch, and this is the Doxa Sub 600T. Uh, now this is a beautiful piece, and this is the Caribbean dial, the blue colour. Doxa designates their dials, colours, with different names. You have uh, Professional for Orange, Caribbean for Blue, 
Sea Emerald for green, White Pearl for white, Sea Rambler for silver, Diving Star for yellow, Aqu Aquamarine for um, turquoise, and uh, there's there's a black and white variant as well, and I think that's about it. So the 600T, this is a Doxa from the 1980s, this not particular one, but it's a re remake of, of a 1980s Doxa. Totally different design. Really, nothing much like this, and that's why I, I really love it. It's very, very original, eye-catching, uh, and has a great presence on the wrist, but it's only 40 millimeters, although very thick, at four, over 14 millimeters thick, with this stupidly big case back, but it is a 600 meter dive watch. And this one features the Salita SW200 movement, inside. Look at that dial. Very attractive. Uh, no quadrant dial, but you just get these uh, shark tooth indices at 12, 9 and 6. Uh, and lovely orange hour hand. The bezel action on this is actually nicer than the other two, I think. Great bezel action. Lovely to turn. Same no decode dial. You have this shrouded, beautifully done crown, which from the back you think, well, how am I going to turn that? But if you can get it at the back. Look at that case back, absolutely lovely. This is the Jenny Fish, the Jenny family logo. They own Doxa. They also make watches, the Jenny watches, uh, and it turns out, it comes out nice and pops really well. It's a great crown. Uh, SW200, extremely accurate. Some people say it's it's not really good enough for a watch of the price, but you know, if you want one, you have to pay, and it is what it is. So, great bracelet here. Articulation is is crazy on this. It's quite gappy deliberately. Pin and tubes. Tubes are in the middle. Pins go through, uh, and it drapes beautifully. Looks integrated, but it isn't. Heavy watch. Uh, but they're all quite heavy. These, you know, they're all close to two hundred grams or over. And here we have the main floor of this one is this clasp, which isn't very nice. <coughs> Everyone knows. Look at it. But it's perfectly functional, has four micro adjustments, and it does have a dive extension, although it's really not very good. You're never going to use it. Uh, look at that. Absolute shit. But there we are. It's got it. Uh, it works well, and it looks quite nice, but this, this clasp you get on the normal sub-300 and the 600. So, put it on the wrist, and that's that, the 600. Very, very eye-catching watch. Very lovely, comfortable to wear. I've seen other reviews, and people say it's too heavy and it's too big. I don't know who these people are where, you know, 200 grams is heavy, but yes, it's a big watch, but it, it wears lovely. And if you're used to divers, this will be easy to wear for any of you. Fantastic looking. Real presence to it. Lovely. That is the 600T. Uh, I think I've said everything about that one. Really nice. It is thick. It's... Yeah, 14.3 I'm getting. So it's, it's, you know, it's... Marine Master's thicker. I've had an OSD. That was 16.7 millimeters thick, and I could wear that. So depends what you're into. And of course, Doxa makes chronographs uh, for most of these models, not this one. But I'm not, I've never been into chronos. I, I just think it's pointless complication. Never use it, and it just adds cost to servicing. So I've stood away from those, and this is the last one in the collection. This is the big boy of the family. This is Doxa's biggest, heaviest brute. Uh, and this is the sub 1500T. It's almost identical to the 300, just much bigger and heavier and it has a different bracelet and the bracelet is attached with screws which are virtually impossible to remove so difficult to change straps on this one but why would you want to when you have this absolutely fantastic uh, five link bracelet that's brushed and polished absolutely wonderful the tolerances on all of these doxes are excellent compared to things like Seiko's of the same price they really fit together well and the cases are machined so nicely. <clears throat> this one does have one flaw. They all seem to have it. It's slightly misaligned. The pip at the 12 there, as you can see. All of the ones I tried all had this same issue. 
it's either slightly off one way or slightly off the other way, but you don't you don't notice it unless you're looking for it. However, that is something irritating. This watch costs uh, two thousand two hundred and ninety pounds, I think. So it's quite expensive, uh, but it it does have the best movement of the three. This one has the ETA twenty eight ninety two, which is a fantastic movement, really good. The winding is so smooth; you don't even feel it. It's just absolutely lovely. Great knurling on the crown. All of these have fantastic crowns. You don't ever feel scared operating them like you do with Seiko's. My Marine Master crown puts the fear of God into me every time I have to operate it. So this is a big watch. But again, lug to, uh, lug, -to lug is short. You really feel the heft on the wrist. Think about that if you're going to buy one of these because wearing it all day... It, it is quite heavy. It's about 220 grams sized for my wrist. Same ratcheting clasp. Perfect. Works brilliant. And unbelievable watch. I, if I had to keep one of these, it probably would be this one. It's just a, an absolute brute of a watch. Uh, incredibly accurate. This is the Sea Rambler dial, which is a sort of pale silver. Beautiful effect. Same polished out of bezel, which will pick up scratches, but it's just a lovely, lovely piece. Um, I really love this one. Very thick. It is. It's got a domed crystal. This is fifteen hundred meters of, of water resistance. This watch, so of course it's thick. Uh, and how thick is it? Well, this one is. Yes, yeah, sixteen. It's it's as thick as the OSD. I mean, it's very, very thick. But short, the OSD had an absurd lug to lug of about 53 or 4 millimeters, so you really had to have a, a flat, wide wrist to carry that one. This you can wear with a wrist of normal size, 7 inches, quite comfortable. So, very nice watch. So, that's all three of my doxes, and I say, if you're thinking about buying one, hopefully this video has been informative and can help you to make a decision. I can strongly, highly recommend them all. Very, very nice watches. This one is 1,000, what is it, 200 and something, but you can find all these for less. I paid 1,050 for this, uh, or you could pick up a used one. They, they do devalue. Um, you, can, you can get this for about 800 pounds. This one not much over a grand, I think. Uh, and these, these are quite rare. People, I don't think they sell all of these. So I'm not sure. I think they're about 1,500 or something used. But uh, that's it, bros. That's the Doxa. I'm not going to weigh them. I did that yesterday. But that's the Doxa sub collection. Uh, and I hope you've enjoyed it. For the beach, bros. See you later. See you next time.